spent 10 minutes trying to log out of my Facebook on my phone and I can't figure it out, can't find it. So if somebody knows where that is, just send me a message. They don't have to make a big deal out of it. Just tell me where, I can't find it on my phone. Like, I don't, where do you log out? I don't want you to log out. I want to get out. But you can't get out. All right. So, the great reset. We've talked about this in a, a couple of different ways. But the great reset, in case you don't know what it is, is a global agenda, which is spearheaded, if you will, by the World Economic Forum. It can all be summed up pretty much in one sentence. You, you, person looking in the mirror right now, will own nothing and you'll be happy about it. That is the World Economic Forum. That is the Global Reset. See, they give you a bunch of catchy slogans. They tell you that it's good for everyone and it's good for the environment and it's good to, to, to do this to be a better humanitarian. Lockdowns are good. We need to capitalize on different types of, you've heard Democrats say, don't let a, a good or bad situation go to waste, right? Don't let a crisis go to waste. And they're certainly not doing that with the COVID. So what are the goals of the Great Reset? In case you're wondering, they want to abolish ownership of land and goods. Yeah. They want to abolish the idea that you have your personal freedoms for sure, but private land ownership, abolished. Populations will be able to move in and about cities wherever they want. Look at the homeless situation. Look at how many people are living on the street nowadays. Look at the idea of uh, sort of this one community. That's, that's globalism. That's what they want. They, they being the people that would be sitting up in the ivory towers looking down on the peasants. That's what they want. They want control. And of course they want to replace capitalism. You don't believe me? Please, this is the easiest one of all. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez talks about it all the time. She's the new mouthpiece of the Democrat Party. Socialism is good. Capitalism, bad. Go back, listen. In the past week or so, she said it a couple of different times, how capitalism is flawed and wrong. So instead of pursuing profits, companies should pursue the well-being of all of us, the entire planet. Stakeholder capitalism. Think about Marxism when you think about that. Or something similar. But that's the idea. This one global community. Where you are you know, not really asked to be anything spectacular. You're not asked to do much. You just ask to be, right? Prioritize climate change is a number one. See, this is the big ruse because most people who are alive and breathing, most people, not all people, some people are dirtbags and don't care about the environment or anything around it or sort of, sort of, you know, these surrounding animal life. None of it. They could care less about that. But most people care about clean water, clean air, that whole thing, the blue sky, not, you know, breathing in pollutions all the time. But the left in particular has grabbed that narrative and have tried to run away and hide with it when you think about it, right? right? They, they kind of give you the idea that somebody like me is anti-clear skies, breathing air, and, and clean water, right? Somehow, some way, they, they've come up with that ruse. All right, nothing can be further from the truth. But they want to accelerate efforts to reach zero emissions, building green infrastructure, creating a, an incentive for industries to improve their track record. Now, here's, I, I got to admit, if in fact we can do it and do it cost-effective and do it, remember, you've got to be able to do it and do it right. Meaning that if you've got Teslas riding around these giant batteries, you got to figure out where to put those batteries when it's all said and done. And by the way, 
the kids that are mining the minerals for those batteries, you got to kind of pay attention to those. I know that's sort of, that's the easy, low-hanging fruit. There's a lot of other things that are going along with that. But if you can have the same type of power grid, let me rephrase that. If you can have the same type of supply where you go to the light switch, flip it on, and it comes on every time. Or you go to start your car and it starts and you drive away every time. And you could do that with sun and water or wind. Why wouldn't you want that? Why wouldn't you want that? If it's as easy. But it's not as easy. So that's a ways away. And even the windmills that they want to build out in Long Island Sound. I mean, it's... I mean, what happens to these things when they're antiquated 20 years down the road? When the technology continues to evolve and they're out there sitting there spinning or not spinning. And you've wasted all this time and money and energy putting those things together. If you're going to do it, do it right. Don't do it haphazard. Don't do it piecemeal. Don't do it garbage wise. But there's this idea that somehow, I think, this is, and this is my own opinion, is that somehow climate change, we're supposed to run away from climate change if you're a conservative. I, I disagree with that. I don't think, though, that they should factor in this grand, gigantic flip of a switch from fossil fuels to green energy, like, overnight. And that's the impression that they give. And the other thing is, when you talk about... Here's the other part of it, and somebody needs to maybe explain this to me. When they have these fancy commercials on television for electric cars, and half of the commercials for the Super Bowl were about electric cars, what powers those electric cars? Electricity, Lee. Yeah. Where do they get that electricity from? Most of it's from a coal-burning plants. They don't tell you that. So when you can get that electric car to run on electricity generated from wind or water or solar, now you got something. Now I'm paying attention. But you don't have that yet. So stop trying to jab me in the back as if somehow I'm, I'm, I'm the bad guy. Because a lot of this, I think, is garbage, in particular, including the wind. Global digitation digitation is on the list as far as um, the big reset or the great reset. What does that mean? Well, just what I talked about this morning. All countries becoming digital. Everybody on social media. Forget about physical, it's all digital, metaverse. Imagine the control governments would have over you or corporations will have over you when you submit yourself to the metaverse. When you walk around in this virtual world completely created by, completely created by these, you wanna call them geniuses? I was gonna call them, sure they're geniuses. I would give them that. People putting those X's or X's and those ones and zeros together to create this magical supposed world in cyberspace where you can be whatever you want to be. And inside of that, there's you know all these different ways they can control every single aspect of you. If that's what you want, that's fine. But just remember, when you submit to that kind of stuff, you are being controlled to a certain extent. Right? I mean, why would you want to go walking down or walk, take a walk in the park when you can pretend walk in the park? I mean, that's isn't that where we're going? Now, for me, I'd rather go for a walk in the park or go hit a baseball outside as opposed to doing it in some metaverse. But that's me. But as all countries become more digital, it, you know, fuses together the physical and you know, our, our physical, biological identities with the digital identity. And talk about control. When, it when we talk about the digital side of this, think about these truck drivers that are fighting a fight for what they, they believe is, is freedom and they believe is right. And to almost the entire extent, I believe that they're right as well. Fighting that fight for something they believe in. God bless them for that. And um, the, imagine the power that they have they being let's say the the digital world i mean the banks seized that money that was donated to them so these truckers 
who are fighting for their Canadian freedom, for their right to choose, right? They had a bunch of people donate money to them so that they could help them survive while they're sitting there in their trucks, giving up their livelihood to fight. They had 10 million bucks, got seized. GoFundMe wouldn't, would not hand it out. In fact, GoFundMe was gonna take the money that was donated. Think about this for a second. Before a lawsuit was thrown out their feet, GoFundMe was going to take the money that was sent to the truckers and give it to, I believe Black Lives Matter was one of the charities that was going to get a big chunk of that $10 million. I guess the head of Black Lives Matter needs another big mansion somewhere. But because of lawsuits, they stopped that. And they gave the money back to the people that donated, but the truckers never got it. So there, you know, there's a group, there's a, the entity of GoFundMe made the, their decision, their political decision to screw the truck drivers. And in doing so, truck drivers didn't get the money that they were promised or that was donated to them. That's digital. That's big business. That's these corporations dictating what you do. Why do you think Gordon Vidal? for as much fun as we have and breaking stones with him on the air is ahead of the time when it comes to this. And the more I think about it, the more he is so right about this. The thought of a cashless society makes the powers that be, man, it makes them drool. It makes them salivate. Not, not being able to track your money down to the penny. They hate that. They hate it. They would love it if you spent every cent, every cent you had was tied. Because think about it, just for a second. Even, I mean, even now, most of us have given our true power, our true freedom to the bank, right? Because no one's ca carrying around their savings with them, or most people don't put it in a shoebox in their house. But think about this for a second. If they could stop the truck drivers from getting the donations, that were sent to them. What's to eventually stop the bank from saying, eh, I'm not going to give you your savings. Nah, today. We're going to keep a hold of that. All right. How much is one different from another? I don't know. I think it's a legitimate, it's a legitimate fear, I would think. And the final part of the Great Reset is America will no longer be a superpower. Do you know how, how badly your progressive friends would love to just be a member of the global community? No better than anyone else, no worse than anyone else. Just, just there, just part of that global community. And every time I think about this, I can't help but think about Star Trek. I don't know why, but the Federation. Right, where all the people together, which on the surface, it seems wonderful. Everybody, no matter what religion, what shade of skin, you know, what they look like, if they're from another planet or this one, we all say, you know, get together, hold hands, and sing Kumaya. It would just a wonderful, it would be wonderful if that were the case. Problem is, it doesn't happen. Hasn't happened, won't happen. The, the likelihood of that happening, where everybody sings Kumbaya and holds hands, is so far removed. But see, here's the thing. You know what's holding it back? What's holding it back is what I just talked about. Capitalism. The idea of a digital world. The idea that America sets itself apart from everybody else. See, progressives don't like that. And that's why... As long as people like me and you who are listening to, to me spew here this morning, as long as we are willing to fight for freedom and willing to stand the ground when it comes to you know, being better, being great, defending capitalism, defending our, this way of life, as long as we're willing to do that, then they'll... The, the idea of them getting this to this global community won't happen. But what, you know, on the flip side of that, if you're looking at it from a perspective of the progressives, the progressives, they want everybody to hold hands and sing Kumbaya. So if America was willing to yield its superpower, right, 
willing to yield the, the idea that it's better than everybody else, then we can all just get together and, and have, live a, a wonderful life and all that goes along with that. See, the problem is, how do we get there? We get there by giving up everything that we are. Everything that makes us great. Everything that has made us great for 245 years. And I'm not willing to do that. The ingenuity, the brilliance of all of it. And they want to drag America down to this level. I was going to say cesspool. Some countries are a cesspool. Some countries are horrible. And progressives would like to drag us into the basement. So instead of rise, you know, raising other countries up, all tides, you know, boats rise with the tide. Instead of doing that, they would prefer to drag us down. And by doing the things in the Great Reset, that's what they would be doing. Dragging the country down. It's pretty simple. And for us to be part of a global community, we would have to give up things that make us great. We would have to give up things that make us different. We would have to do things that make us like everyone else. You'd have to lose some of your personal freedoms to be part of that community. I'm not willing to do that. And the Great Reset is being driven, not really by the government, right? Our government's too stupid to even figure out a way to get to that point. But the Great Reset is being driven by big business. The World Economic Forum. People like Gates and uh, Dava, basically Soros, Zuckerberg, the United Nations in a way. Great reset, it's happening, man. How do you fix it? How do you fight it? Will you elect people that don't think our way of life is one that should be given up without a fight? 